right. Um, it is day two of the advent of uh, live coding. And uh, I think I'm ready for it. We'll see if I'm ready for it. And uh, it will start in 20 seconds. And hopefully it goes well. Um, I want to finish as fast as possible, not uh, so much that I can get on the leaderboard, but so I can go to bed because I like uh, I like sleep and I'm tired, um, as always. I'll probably be saying that a lot throughout this. So, um, your flight departs in a few days from the coastal airport. The east way down the coast from here is via Toboggan. Shopkeeper in the North Pole Toboggan Rail Shops having a bad day, something's wrong, we can't log in. Their password database seems to be a little corrupted. Some of the passwords would not have been allowed by the policy that was in fact when they were chosen. Try to debug the problem. They've created a list of passwords and the corporate policy when that password was set. For example, suppose you have the following list, 13A, blah, blah, blah. Each line gives the password policy and then the password. Password policy indicates the lowest and highest number of times that a given letter must appear for the password to be valid. For instance, 1 to 3A means that the password must contain A at least one time and at most three times. Um, in the above example, two passwords are valid. The middle password CD, if G is not, it contains no instances of B, but needs at least one. The first and third passwords are valid. They contain 1A or uh, INC, but how many passwords are valid according to the policies? Okay, so we can do that pretty easily. Um, passwords equals, um, so let's uh, ch -ch -ch do this. And, um, and of course, uh, you know, because it's me, I will model things as named tuples, uh, which I always like to do. Um, because that makes things nice. Um, and let's say uh, class, I'll just do this, which is, an, I was thinking I, I would do a couple, but, um, and let's say um, low is an int, high is an int, um, car is a string, and password is a string. Um, and so then we can do a couple of things. We can say uh, is valid self uh, is a bool, and that will tell us if a password is valid. Um, and what we can do is we can say uh, return low is less than or equal to password dot count. Is that a, is is that a function? Uh, let's see if that's a function. I can't even remember. Maybe cd dot count a. Uh, a b c a dot count a perfect so that does exactly what I want low is less than uh, and these need to be self dot low is less than or equal to self dot password dot count self dot car uh, is less than or equal to self dot high um, so that returns uh, whether the password is valid I think I understood that correctly uh, let me just double check that uh, lowest must appear okay and now, um, and I want to uh, static method, uh, so from line, um, and let's say line is a string, and that's going to return, and uh, uh, f we need to do from future import annotations that will allow us to do the static method that returns its own class. Um, so we're going to return a password from a line. And now how are we going to do that? We are going to um, uh, what are we going to do? We could do um, a regex, but that's uh, almost too much. So let's say uh, count car um, password equals line dot strip dot split so that'll get us into two things um, and then low high equals um, int n for n in 
counts dot split. So we'll we'll split the first part by the dash and then turn it into int and then unpack it. Um, and then we'll say char equals uh, char uh, zero because there's just one. We, we don't want the colon. Um, and then I can say return password of low high car password. Okay. And so I'm going to do two things. Uh, is I'm going to say uh, run day zero two, and let's just say uh, password dot parse pw for pw in passwords. Uh, what did I call it? Not parse. I should have called it parse, uh, but I think it's from line. Uh, so one three, um, and now let's say uh, is valid, true, false, true. So that seems uh, that seems pretty good. Um, how many passwords are valid according to their policies? Okay, so um, let's copy this input and put it in day two dot text dot text save it okay and so now let's say with open uh, inputs d02 dot text as f passwords equals uh, password dot from line line for line in f and print s sum of pw is valid for pw in passwords. Okay, so I didn't really write a test, but that's okay. Um, so let's run that again now. It says 383, uh, so let us try that. That's the right answer, okay, good. While it appears to be validated the passwords correctly, don't seem to be what the official toboggan corporate authentication system is expecting. Shopkeeper suddenly realizes that he just accidentally explained the password policy rules from his old job, the sled rental place down the street, the toboggan. Each policy actually describes two positions in the password, where one means the first character, two means the second character, and so on. Be careful, have no concept of index zero. Exactly one of those positions must contain a given letter. Other occurrences of the letter. Um, so... Um, that gives us uh, another version of is valid, um, which is, um, uh, let's call this, uh, call it is valid two. Is valid two self goes to bool. Um, and um, let's say is low equals self dot password um self dot low plus one e equals or self dot low minus one uh, I think uh, equals self dot car um, so let's go back and double check that, that I understood that correctly position one um, so for position one we actually want to check index zero um, and uh, let's say is high equals self dot password self dot high minus one equals self dot car and now we said it's valid if uh, exactly one of those is true um, so return either is low oh, oh well actually here's the easiest way to do this turn is low is not equal to is high. So one has to be true and one has to be false. Um, so um, and now um, let me go back to my um, here and let's run it again and um, and let's just do is valid two and just double check that. So that says true, false, false. Um, so is valid, invalid, invalid. So that looks wrong. So 272, so I will try that. Um, and 
Uh, you have completed day two, one gold star closer, same year vacation, rank 884 on the stars leaderboard. Okay, so that was um, that was pretty straightforward. Um, really the things to notice, uh, which are like the, the most Joel things possible um, about the solution to the problem, um, because this is how I solve like literally every problem using Python. And you'll probably see me do this if you watch the videos like a bunch more times is uh, one using named tuples, type named tuples to uh, model things. Uh, so here, um, you know, just by creating this name tuple, and some people will use data classes. I don't use data classes because um, I don't like them. They're immutable. Um, I like name tuples, which are, immu I mean, nothing's immutable in Python, but they're, they're mostly immutable and um, compact and, and, and delightful. Um, and you can add methods to them. So to me, like this, this makes a ton of sense as the way to solve the problem is that we have this nice model where we've captured um, low, high, the character and the password. Um, we have this static method, which is going to do the parsing for us. Um, that's another thing that I always tend to have. Um, and then because it, it, it is like a class, I can add these methods um, is valid, is valid too. And because, you know, I use this name tuple to model things, um, I can use, you know, self.low, self.password. So, so basically I, I'm modeling my data as what it is. Um, so I don't have to worry about like stupid variable names or dictionaries or anything. It, it just, so like, this is, like I said, this is the Joel way of, of solving almost any problem I would say, but in particular this problem. And so, uh, yeah, um, that's that and I will push this to GitHub. So thanks, uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you tomorrow.